Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Have you ever judged somebody for their parenting skills or been judged yourself? Truth is, anyone with siblings or children knows that even when children have the same biological parents, their personalities can be as different as night and day, and their needs are not the same. Joining us now is Yeti Williams of Lagos Moms to help us navigate those parenting gray areas. Good morning, Yeti. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. So first, start, telling us, start by telling us, what is Lagos Moms and why did you start it? Okay, great. Um, Lagos Moms is an online hub. It started as an online hub for um, parents raising kids, um, primarily focused on doing it in, in Lagos. And parenting has always been challenging. It always will be. But we can, I think we can all agree that raising kids in Lagos is a little bit more unique or challenging than many other places. So the whole idea started when I was um, a new mom myself and I had a two-year-old and a baby and I just had a lot of questions and I was always going online and you know and that's really where I found a gap that there was very little for um, a mom raising kids out of Lagos. A lot of the f f things I was finding online were taking me to the UK, the US and I thought you know what it would be great to have something that's locally relevant and that's really how um, Lagos once started. That's, that's brilliant. And of course, sometimes we hear about the notion of raising kids in the 21st century, etc. Right. What is unique about raising kids in a city like Lagos? Yeah. So raising kids in Lagos, Lagos is really stressful. It's very busy, the hustle is real, all those things, right? Um, and then you add on top of that the 21st century. You add on top of that all the challenges with digital media, screen time, not spending enough time with your children. If you are not there, there's an answer ready for your children all the time. All they have to do is go online, you know? So I think it's very dangerous to raise kids in a world where there's so much content and there's not always the right context behind it. So that's what makes raising children in today's world slightly different is that parents have to understand that by raising them alongside the internet. It's no more or, it's and. So if we're doing it together and we're not giving as, we're not making sure that our voices are the loudest in the children's heads and you know, when they think about something, are they thinking first what mom and dad said, or are they thinking first what they saw online? So those are some of the, I think, really unique challenges that we're facing, facing today. And that's part of what we try to talk about a lot on um, Lagos Moms. The average parent today will tell you, screen time is a challenge. How do I manage it? For me, I'd say nature abhors a vacuum in everything, particularly in children. If you do not fill your children, something else will. Yeah. And that's really the danger there. So I wanted to talk to you about what I mentioned in the intro, the dreaded mom shaming. <laughs> <laughs> Lagos Mom, obviously, mm -hmm. you've created this platform. You give a lot of resources, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you also set a standard. But what are your thoughts on mom shaming? That standard that you're setting is not in a, an effort to judge or critique people, but a lot of mothers, we do that to each other. Yeah. So I think that falls on a, a, a trait women have in general, and then mother, motherhood happens to be one of those um, sub-segments of us judging each other and putting ourselves on pedestals. That's just not right. So I, I'm always very quick to say that Lagos Moms community doesn't suggest anybody has all the answers. I certainly don't, you know, but together we can learn. You know, there's an African proverb that says it takes a village to raise a child. I still think it's very relevant. It's just that now I joke that it's an e-village, <laughs> you know, but raising children is about a support system. Your support system will be different from mine, but we all need a support system. Nobody can do it alone. Nobody has all the answers. So when you see a parent struggling with something, don't just assume that you know, they're not, they're not living up to what they should be doing. You really don't know what the conditions are behind that. So mom shaming for me is a no-no. You know, I think we all also need to get rid of guilt because a lot of women are, feel so guilty. And when you're guilty, it's robbing you of being able to do your best if you're always feeling that you're falling short. Mm -hmm. So those are some of the things that we try to ensure that, listen, Nobody here, we're not playing a judging game. If you have a question, ask me because I might have experienced it before. I know somebody who has an answer or I can send you a resource that would help you through that. That's brilliant. And often we also forget about the role of fathers yes. when it comes to raising kids. And this has been a problem that's existed for way too long. Yeah. Yeah. How does Lagos Moms in any way, if it does, push on the importance of the role of a father? And what, what have you seen in terms of the women that and other mothers that you've had interactions with in terms of how much of the support they get from the father of their yeah. child? 
Yeah. And that's a fantastic point. And like you said, it's been around forever. You know, so we have some. We have this annual conference once a year where we bring. I started with an idea to bring moms together to so move from the online to the physical space, and I think the first year we had it, we had maybe two dads show up. And over the years, I found more fathers actually showing up. I've had more fathers asking questions. And you know what the interesting thing is that I'm finding? A lot of men say nobody gives them the opportunity to be hands-on. Culture doesn't necessarily, I'm not saying this is not everybody, of course, but there's a fair number that reach out and say, culture doesn't actually give them the opportunity to be an involved father. They get questions, they get comments like, oh, just go and make the money. Just pay the bills, you know. So they're not particularly encouraged. They're not given by their wives or by other people. Culture, so culture, their wives, the system. If a regular father, if father says he can't go to the office and say he wants to take time off because they don't even have paternity leave to start with. So they have a new child. They can't even say I want to take a week or two off because my wife has had a new baby. The office is looking at them like, excuse me, you know, what's that about? You know, then you move on to some of the um, subconscious things we've carried over as mothers, even in the modern world. You expect to just do everything. So a lot of us also don't allow, let him make the mistakes. Like I keep joking, I wasn't born knowing how to change diapers. You know, it's not something I was born doing, but my husband could only learn by doing it. So yeah, let it be a bit leaky. Yes, it might be a bit messy, but the more you do, the more you get better. So I think it's really important that the women themselves start to know that a man's role is not only to father the child and to pay the bills. So that also means that when you're looking, I always say, you know, shine your eyes before you get married. Look for this kind of things and say, you know what, I want a man who's going to be as involved in raising children. So that should also play a part in who you're dating and hoping to get married to. Now, those who are already married and are facing a situation where he's like, you know what, um, that's not what I do, it's little by little. It's little by little that you just try to bring them in. But I will say that I've been impressed and amazed by how much dads are saying, when are we going to have Lagos dads? It's, you know, so which is That's great. News. Are you having Lagos dads? It's, it's, it's a plan. Yes. <laughs> We're watching, watching that space. So you mentioned your conference. This year's yes. theme is creativity, currency of the future. Yes. Why did you choose that theme? Yeah, every time I bring parents together, I don't want us to talk about things like how to discipline your child. You know, those are some of the things that we all expect to do, right, or we, we should be doing. Bringing us together is really to try and shake things up a bit and have us have real conversations about raising kids in today's world. So I, I joke that you can't say you're raising a child as good enough for Etiosa or your local government. Our kids today are connected globally. So when we're raising a global citizen, which is what we're all doing, how do we ensure we're staying ahead of the curve? So for me, creativity is one of those things where um, AI is taking over, artificial intelligence is taking over, right? Technology is taking over, jobs as we know it are going. There are industries that exist today that didn't exist five, ten years ago. So we cannot raise children based on the world that we knew. We have to raise them based on the world that's ever changing. So what do we need? And creativity is actually one of the biggest tools that we have. Everybody's born creative. So before you get the label that says, oh, I'm not very creative, that's not true. That's because you've gone through a particular process that tells you, are you out of science? Are you this or that? So how do we start to change that narrative to say, knowledge is no more special. We all have it. We have access to the same information online. But how do we use it? How do I bring my creativity to be different in the workplace, in my business? So I want us as parents to have, that con have those conversations so that we realize that, you know what, this is something that our children have to imbibe from a very early age. And that would help us when it even comes to all the decisions we make. So the kind of school our children should go to, you should be asking those questions when you go and interview the school. How do you incorporate this into your curriculum? You know, so that will hopefully start to change the narrative um, as a whole. Absolutely, and what would you say you feel are the greatest problems or mistakes that parents make when it comes to raising children in the 21st century? I think labels. I think labels are huge. Um, so I think the, the label issue is, has always been, but in the 21st century, it's even more dangerous because if you label a child a certain way, so you say this child is just not good in, I don't know, math or science or whatever it is, or they're not, they're not creative, those kind of labels. And so you put a child in a box, but unfortunately they are seen, remember we're all connected now, so they're seen they could be on Instagram, they could be anywhere, and they're seeing their feeds consistently showing people living a certain kind of life. You have children struggling with the labels 
that they've received at home, with how they're really feeling inside, with how they want to express themselves. So when there's that, you know, um, that tension, it really does affect a child from being able to live their best, um, express themselves the best way. The other thing that parents today are struggling with is time. Time is, yes, we're all really busy, traffic is crazy, you go out in the morning, you come back at night, your child is, at, in, is in bed, you haven't spent quality time, you're wondering what you're going to do. And once again, remember this is a no shame zone, so this is not to point any fingers, but there are little things you could do to make quality time with your children. And I joke, one of the things you can do is on Saturday morning, before you get out of the house and go to the O and Best, I'll take you out all day, wake up a little early, spend 30 minutes together, one hour together, and spend quality time with no devices. With no devices, because that's another big thing in today's world. We're all behind our devices, and we're not spending quality time looking at you in the eye, seeing your body language, picking up the things that a child is saying from their body language because you are distracted. So distracted parenting is also a major, major challenge we're facing. Well, you're physically present, but mentally a million you're miles there. away. You're not <laughs> there. So you're, and your child senses that, that I'm not as important as your device. You know, so they are, they're going to, they're, that's how they're going to see life, that the phone is more important than me. You know? These phones, put them down. Put them down. Put them down. Yeah. Yes. That's what, yeah. I, do, I have a real issue with screens. Yeah, you're completely right about that. You have to balance it. There's such a barrier in the home sometimes, screens. We don't even know it, but they are. They are. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about, you said about um, interviewing schools and asking questions about like how they incorporate creativity in the curriculum. Yeah. You have a bird's eye view of the whole educational landscape in Nigeria and also in the UK because you have tips for finding boarding schools in the yes. UK. What do you think of our education system here as it is today with regards to teaching skills for the future? Mm. You know, start the conversation on education in Nigeria it would be a huge one, but first of all, a lot of things have to be overhauled. You know, we're still using a lot of the same old. Now, obviously, it depends on the curriculum you're looking at. But the pure Nigerian curriculum is still very um, root style. It's still, it's still based on a lot of quantity, like how much you know versus how well you know it. And I think that's one of the things that have to start changing because children react. Children have always learned through play. That has always been something children do. But many times you go to a traditional school setting and you're not allowed to play. You're allowed, you just have to sit and follow the rules and, you know, this is a curriculum and you must be good on this and then pass on that. So I think schools need to start, educational systems, schools themselves need to start to change how they teach children. Children learn very well by being involved. I know that, for example, there are certain subjects I hated in school just because of the way it was taught. And my kids, the way they learn concepts, it's so practical that I'm relearning some subjects through them. <laughs> you know, because we're doing homework together and the way they do math, for example, the way they do number bonding, they just, you know, they calculate really fast. Whereas I'm thinking, oh my God, I need a calculator. I'm stuck in that, oh my God, I'm bad at math type of label. Back to these labels, I'm bad at math. Oh my goodness, so once I get a sum, I freeze because I'm like, I, I can't calculate it. I, I need a calculator. But for them, they bond up, they bond down. You know, they don't even have exams in school. They don't call it exams. They just say it's, it's assessments. The children should know the work. So it's not about cramming for an exam. It's not about spitting out the answers and an, in an exam. Then the very next day, the child doesn't remember what they learned because they're like, phew, thank God the exam is done and I can go back to real life. So those are some of the things we have to start incorporating. And a child can teach themselves with YouTube in the right way. Technology is great, right? It's just the balance. There's so much a child can learn online, so you don't have to be the one screaming, because that's another thing. We parents want to help them, start shouting and screaming, and the child is thinking of you and the subject and thinking, oh they my God. They can even destroy the relationship between mother yes. and child for life. And I think it, I still have um, <laughs> flashbacks when I'm trying to read the time. Remember my mom was teaching me analog and I just couldn't get it. So now I still have that clock in my head. It's a red clock that says tell the time. Memories <laughs> you'll never forget. You know? So we just need to make it more fun. I yeah. think we need to make it more fun. Oh, we're going to go on a short break, Yeti. Please stay with us. We'll be back with Yeti Williams of Lagos Moms. Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. We're still with Yeti Williams of Lagos Moms. So... Let's go back to your conference this year. Right. We've talked about the theme. Tell us about the speakers. Okay. 
So like I said, the theme this year is creativity is the currency of the future. And so we're bringing a lot of varied speakers. So we're bringing people from the um, you know, creative industry. The Because when you think of creativity, many times you're thinking arts and crafts, you're thinking music, you're thinking dance. So we're bringing people from that space. Um, like Kathy is going to be one of our speakers and she's going to actually share how her journey to dancing started. We're bringing um, Sarah Bulos, who's the chairman of um, Society of Performing Arts Nigeria as well, to talk about the importance of music in raising children. It's very critical. Then we're also bringing educationists. So we're bringing a, somebody who's, who's a teacher and a researcher as well. Uh, we're bringing mental health specialists as well, because that's a real thing, is mental health and how our children are seeing themselves and facing life, because we're all going to face challenges. But how are we raising children who are resilient enough to face that? So we have Dr. Mimuna, we have Stephen, we have we have a lot of lot of speakers this year. Um, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be hosting. I'm a life coach myself, so I'm going to be, you know, doing some fireside chats. Um, who else do we have? We have um, we have uh, Modula from Google. I mean, Google Technology, they're one, right? So she's coming to talk about that as well and how we can enhance um, our children's online um, usage. You know, there's a right way to do it, there's a wrong way to do it, so how do we keep that in mind? Um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a long day, it starts at 9 a.m. and we have different sessions. So you could decide which one speaks to you more. Some people come all day and they're just there all day because it's really conversational. With parenting, nobody has all the answers. And I think when you start that conversation with that in mind, that nobody has all the answers, everybody kind of just lets their guards down and says, you know what, you're right. So we're here to learn. We're here to all, you know, talk talk among ourselves. So that's also very helpful. And then we're having some HR practitioners as well, because what we're finding is that what you share online is affecting your ability to get a job, and that's happening locally. So when you're raising kids today, you need to help them understand what it means to be a digital citizen, a responsible digital citizen. Whatever you put online stays online. So if I want to hire you and I Google your name and I see some crazy pictures you shared, let it be 10, 15 years ago when you didn't know better, that's not the point. That's what I see and that is affecting people actually getting opportunities today. So we're having HR people come in to talk about that. We also have somebody who teaches um, fresh graduates, soft skills. So back to this creativity as a top skill for the future. It really is. So it's no more just about what grade did you finish with a 2-1 or first class. It's about what are the soft skills you have. Do you think out of the box? Thinking out of the box is no more something that's, that is celebrated. You all have to think out of the box. So what makes you different? <clears throat> so those are some of the things that we'll be, um, we'll be covering. What date is the conference? It's on Saturday, this Saturday, October 12th, and it's holding at Harbour Point. So it's, it's free to attend. We have amazing sponsors who, who, who see the vision and understand that the future is about our children and families. So it's free to attend. We just need people to register. And it's Saturday, October 12th at Harbour Point in VI. Where do they register? It's online. So if you go to our website, lagosmoms.com, you will find the banner on the top. Once you click on it, you register, and then you get a confirmation that you have a seat. Brilliant. Brilliant. So let's go back to what we were speaking about before the break when you were talking about schools with children. Um, what, what advice would you give to parents when it comes to picking out the right school for your child? First of all, there's a right school for every budget. I say that because you don't have to clean out like the that. bank. There's a right school for every budget. And because the school is expensive, doesn't mean that it's good or that it fits your child. So it's really important that when you're, when you're going to pick a school, they are not doing you a favor. The school is not doing you a favor as a parent. You are doing them a favor by giving them your child to help you raise them. So as a result, you have to ask those kinds of questions when you go to the school. How, what's your vision mission? How do you train children? What is your, what's a, what, curriculum is one thing. How do you administer that? You know, how do you discipline? What other things do your children do? Give us some examples. Do you have pictures? You know, do they go into competitions? Those kinds of questions are really critical. And then one little tip I give as well is visit the school on the day you are not expected. Schools might not like to hear this, but just show up on a day that you are not expected. For example, at the very minimum, you test their security protocols, right? If you just show up and say, I'm going in and they let you in, that's a red flag. Then you, you just walk in. So when the administration is not expecting you to come, how do they treat you when you walk through the doors? When, how do they deal with you? Maybe you ask to see a class. Can you see a class in session? A class that children are engaged and excited and interacting with their teacher. It's very different from a class that the children just look like, oh, can you just get me out of here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so those are some of the things that you would ask. And then, of course, as the, as the, 
as you get higher up, so as you're going into primary or secondary, you want to ask where are they feeding the children off to? So after secondary school, are the children going to universities? What kind of universities are they going to? So those questions are really important because I find that some parents just are like, oh my God, my child got in and they're excited about that. But you've asked, you haven't asked, is this child right? I mean, is this school right? for my child. And there are some schools that are also all-inclusive, which means it's not purely on academics. So an all-inclusive school, school will work with any child based on any skill, skill level that they are. So it doesn't have to only be A's. If your child is very creative in terms of the art, they draw and they write and they like to art, they're they are in drama and all of that, you want a school that's going to enhance that, not a school that says, no, sit down, you know. So those are some of the tips yeah, for that. A lot of thought does need to go into it. But now, you know, we all grew up hearing that there's no manual for raising children, and we believe that. But people like you are creating a manual for raising children. It's an interactive manual. It's a non-judgmental manual, but a manual nonetheless, a real guidance. How are you changing that narrative and encouraging people to join Lagos Moms and actually see that there is guidance out there? Because yeah. you do put a lot of thought. I even saw that you have timetables for people to follow yeah. if they choose to. There's a lot of thought that has gone into it and a lot of the groundwork has been done. How do you let people know that this resource is available? Yeah. So a lot of it, honestly, is word of mouth. A lot of it is word of mouth. You know, when I started, I'm telling you, the first conference was, I was thinking I'll get 20 people. And now we're at conferences of 1,000 people coming. So it's also been a huge leap for me to see that there's such a need. There is no manual. But we don't have to repeat the same mistakes, right? We really don't. So one of the, my best, my favorite word is intentional. What does it mean to be intentional? You're thinking about what you're doing. You're thinking about why you're doing it. So I think intentional parenting is really the model that I love to share with everybody. I do a lot of parenting coaching as well. And I ask you, when you're, raising, you're not raising a child, you're raising an adult. So if you're raising an adult, you need to have a vision and exercise to say, what do I want this person to be like in 20, 30 years? And when you have that down, you can now start to work backwards. So that's where the intentionality comes in. If you want a child that knows how to make the right decisions on eating the right foods, it doesn't happen at 25. It's from two, three years old. They need to understand that they need to have their vegetables. So the, the timetable, for example, is like a meal timetable. Children should eat proper food because when they do and they learn how to make the right choices, they grow with that. You know, people say, oh, I don't have time. But I think saying that is really an excuse. You will never have enough time. But zero to 10 years old is the biggest window you have to make impact in your child's life, zero to 10. After that, what you get is what you've put in. Simple. So when you, this is not to scare anybody. Some people even say seven. Some say seven, but I even try to say, you know, let's not freak out too much. So zero to ten. But after that, what you get is what you've given. So if you have a child hasn't learned how to eat vegetables at ten, it gets much harder. So what do you do? You have to do things like that together. So that's where intentional comes in. You want a, an adult who's responsible. Once again, it doesn't happen overnight. From two years old, they should have chores. People say really, but yeah, you finish playing with toys, put it back. You know, you finish eating your food, take it to the kitchen, little by little, then you build on that, you build on that. So you keep building on that. So that's intentional, that's focus. I might play with you, I'm, but I'm not your friend. I'm your mother or father. I will, friendship is a tool. So I will use friendship to get you in, but I'm not your friend. Because that friend idea makes you think, oh, you know, anything goes. I don't want you to hate me. So OK, OK, you know, no, 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 that's the right way. That's the right way to, to, to ensure. But you, with intentional parenting, too, you're being very conversational. You're explaining to them. They don't have to like your rules, but they must understand it. There's a difference. So you must understand why I'm saying this. You know, so I, I could spend all day on that. But honestly, it's really just looking at your child, your family, what are your values? Mine will be different from yours. And then you just say, this is the adult I'm trying to raise. These are the things I want them to be able to do. God help me. You pray every day. But then you start to just do the little bit you can every day. Yeah. You know. Let me ask you about two controversial topics. And I thought about this when we were speaking about schools. What's your take on same-sex schools and children going to same-sex schools? That's mm. the first one. And then what's your take on Scotland banning spanking? OK, so I'll take the same-sex schools first. I went to a same-sex secondary school, and I said I wouldn't do it for my kids, because there's really no need. I, I personally think that go and figure out how to operate with the opposite sex, right? So that when you get into the real world, it's not a shock to the system. But I know there are people who think, well, if, if you're in a same-sex school, you just focus on academics, you're not worried about whether boys or girls like you, you know, but I'm like, that's not the real world. So personally, 
I, I say, you know, uh, mixed schools. Um, but that's once again for me. Um, in terms of banning spanking, do you know? That's a hard one, isn't that's it? That's a hard one. Because <laughs> discipline is, you know, for me, discipline is, it has to be strategic. Why am I spanking you? Most times you spank, as a parent, especially, most times you spank out of frustration. You're at your wit's end. So spanking many times is lashing out. The child might not learn, you know, might not learn anything from being spanked. They just think mom hurt me or dad hurt me and they go away, shake it off and they still do the same thing, you know. So if a, I don't know that schools, I don't think schools should spank, but I do think schools should discipline. There's a big difference. So I haven't, I actually haven't heard the story that they banned spanking, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but... Um, but I think, you know, the question is, what are they replacing it with? You know, how are they going to be disciplining the children? But everybody needs to be disciplined. How you're disciplined is then the question. I don't, I don't really spank my kids. Honestly, I don't, but I think they're well behaved, you know? <laughs> but children need to know that there's a repercussion. And I think that's the biggest thing. If you act a certain way, you have free will. I've told you what to do if you act a certain way. Well, there are consequences to every behavior, good and bad. We only have a few seconds left. So I want to talk to you about plans for Lagos Moms because MomsNet, the platform, the similar platform yes, in, the UK, in the UK, their founders were judged the seventh, well, jointly, the seventh most powerful woman in the UK. The top ten had people like Theresa May, the Queen of England, and then these ladies from MomsNet. Right. They can actually swing elections, it has been said. <laughs> what are your plans for Lagos Moms? For Lagos Moms and swinging elections. Yes. <laughs> Becoming a player, <laughs> yes. a powerful voice, yeah. just outside of parenting yes, as well. Yes. So, you know, it's definitely something that's been an exciting journey. Um, this wasn't a conversation to talk about how it started and how it's become something that's actually a full-time business because the companies that see this, um, you know, parents, I mean, families are a huge, huge part of, you know, the economy and who makes a lot of the decisions on what we buy, what we eat, what brand we like. It's the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Thank you, you know? So many times, so I found that I've been able to actually make that connection that do you realize that these are your most important set of people? So if you speak to them in the way that they feel respected and empowered, it's a whole different discussion. So to answer your question, watch the space. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you Perfect note to end it. Thank you so much for coming in.